What's up guys, today is day 103 on my journey to 2000 and we have some crazy, 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 crazy games and crazy stuff that happened. Anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is a blitz game where I had a brilliant move, I just thought it was cool. My opponent overextended, so I sacked my, uh, my knight to get into the position, tacked his queen, traded, took his rook, and uh, I was just winning here and I think I go on to win the game. The second thing I want to show you guys is the Queen's Pawn opening. I did some analysis on it, and uh, I think this is for the past 30 days, but the past 90 days, my record on it is not too good. And I saw I'm, I'm be I basically get low, low on time when there's a Queen's Pawn opening, so I kind of improved upon that in the next few games I'm going to show you guys. And then after we go over the games, we'll play a game too, of course. Um, but I lost so many games. The first two games I, I played, my hands were super cold, and I actually remember when I was like 15 or 1600 rated player. I lost a lot of games with my hands being cold. So I, I bumped up the heater My hands got better and I actually started playing better. It was, it was very interesting, but the first two games I lose I want you guys to see how insane I, I literally just reviewed this right before pressing the record button this specific game and I knew I made mistakes After the game, but I didn't see this one last mistake, which was insane. Like honestly crazy insane mistake It's like sad like if I did this in a tournament, I would cry type of mistake. So <laughs> we just, you know, break into the position, kind of normal stuff. I saw this pawn move attacking the, the knight, of course, but I didn't know what to do after like, oh, well, like after this. Apparently the machine says go back to C8. I would have never done that. Um, and it's just winning. I guess I could trap the knight or something. Um, I just thought I would have to trade for some reason. So, something like this, 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 and let's say he castles. Um, yeah, it looks like I could trap the knight. And the knight is trapped. It says here, here, you know, he could take like this, he could take like this. Maybe I even push and the game would continue. I didn't see that idea. <clears throat> Trapping knights is something I, I have to get better at. But anyway, after taking, I, I kind of see all this and I'm fine with this. And I just push because I see, I mean, he castles queenside, which is... Just seems terrible to me, so I just keep pushing, and uh, we trade pieces, and thankfully he takes my knight. I'm kind of happy because that bishop was annoying. And uh, I had to be careful because I knew he was going to put a piece here, have a battery, and, and stare at my c7 pawn. So after trading, which I didn't mind because I, was, I would be up a pawn, this is where the crazy stuff goes. Um, I have two minutes left in this game. Every time I have two, not every time, a lot of times I have two minutes. I've said it before. I just... I, I get intimidated or I just make big mistakes. Okay. Here I come here just to target the rook, make it walk away. Okay. Here my opponent blunders. Okay. He blunders a mate in three. For those that don't see, check here, check here, check me. Beautiful mate in three. Okay. I should have seen it. I kind of saw ideas of checking here, but I was scared of my opponent. So I, I actually quickly played this move. I calculated it a few moves earlier. If I just took 10 seconds to look at the position, I probably would have seen mate. But I pushed the pawn because I'm like, okay, the rook's going to get out of the way. Fine. But he actually comes here. Now I see this idea of coming here and I'm like, oh my god, I actually got checkmate with like a minute left. I come here. <sighs> he takes my queen. And I didn't see that the rook could take my queen, okay? I didn't see this move. And like an idiot, I resign after this move. Guys, I have a checkmate threat. <laughs> the crazy queen sack checkmate threat in this position. Takes, here, checkmate. The pawns are just super duper powerful. And I, I resign. So I didn't see that last part. I knew that I messed up checkmate. I didn't even see the queen sack was still a checkmate until like a second before recording this video. Anyway, the second uh, game we go into the fantasy variation and my opponent plays fast and of course that gets to me. I have to stop getting intimidated by that. Anyway, he comes here and the idea is here. I always forget to, how to stop it. But knight h3, knight a3, I need to get better at knight movements. You know, th these are very uh, common kind of ideas. And let's say takes, takes. The idea is to come in with check. And if my queen wasn't there, you know, then uh, this could be a checkmate threat, like queen e3. Um, 
but you know if he takes my knight then the bishop is staring at nothing like he could check but then i just take right i didn't realize that i took in the center feeling like it's a mistake and here i took a long break or i guess i didn't <laughs> maybe it was a move after um but i i saw something was wrong obviously he brings the bishop back um i attack the bishop he goes back and here my opponent makes a mistake here i think i think for a while or maybe the next move but i think how can i trap the queen if i take can i trap the queen and i'm like actually i don't think i can well apparently ladies and gentlemen g4 traps the queen because now was it not g4 i thought it was g4 maybe g3 traps the queen with the idea being that if the bishop tries to escape again i go b4 and it's trapped right something like takes 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 and uh you know the game continues and i'm winning here even though the pawn structure looks crazy and i have these two crazy center pawns anyway the other idea, let's say he just uh, develops a piece normally, right? Let's say I go here and he, I don't know, brings the knight there. I can take, because if he takes, I have this bishop move attacking the queen. Um, or at least that's what I thought, but it looks like he gets away. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that traps him. I, I, when I was doing analysis before, I think it trapped the queen. Whatever, maybe it was a different move. Anyway, uh, he goes here. Oh, oh, maybe it was g4 then. And then something like this, 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 this. I don't know. I'm too dumb, guys. I'm too dumb. Okay. But that's the idea. Like, we just put a lot of pressure on the queen, I guess. Anyway, I just kind of go back and forth making a lot of mistakes. And I didn't realize that the position was fairly equal here. I just didn't understand that. Um, and I just tried to push with this pawn. I castle to protect the pawn. And here, stupid me, I could literally just take it. Because after takes, I have the, the knight hanging. So I, I would be winning. Or I would uh, equalize the position. Right? I would be up a pawn, whatever. Something like this um, looks pretty bad. This looks smarter. And uh, yeah, the game would continue. This looks very interesting, you know? But that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Instead, I thought here and I moved the knight to c4 attacking the queen, thinking I'm smart because after takes, I can take and I could sacrifice things to come in with this check somehow. Okay. Sacked my queen to get in the check and I wanted to double my rooks, but it was just it was just dumb decision making. I just very dumb. Anyway, my hands were really cold, right? After that game, my opponent just resigns. After four moves. Literally nothing to say here. Oh, book moves, by the way. This pawn to stop the bishop from coming in. Or the knight, because this is a very annoying attack to deal with. A knight could go to a6, but then the bishop comes. For example, let's say I move this pawn forward. Let's say I move the bishop here. If he comes here, I come here. And it stops this attack, but he could start like kind of having annoying things. By having an eye in this direction. Okay, it's still a neutral game, but anyway, that was fast, right? I took a break because I have to take breaks. By the way, yeah, after these two losses, I took a break and then I won the, that game. I came back and I and I play this game. I take full control of the center, and my opponent, an 1800 freaking rated player, brings the knight out, which I think is the craziest thing. Like, what what is the lot? Maybe he had some line prepared for this, but right away I just blitzed out this move. It's like it's obvious, like. You, yeah, you can just push the knight around. And here I develop my knight because it's nicely kind of behind this c4 pawn. Surprisingly, I make pretty good moves to go for this trade. And here I make my first kind of mistake or miss. I could have on passanted here. You might think, so what? Wait, what's, the, what's the special thing? Boom! Fork, right? And let's say he doesn't take and he castles or something. I'm assuming I just spend resources to protecting... Uh, this or to get into the position you know you can't really attack because then I, i'll live on g6 probably and this looks very annoying for my opponent right maybe i come here the pawn is protected whatever okay um i don't do that because i just completely miss on passant and i'm obsessed with taking this knight and here i mess up 
I'm, I think I'm supposed to just leave the knight there to try to attack later and take. But I thought this was nice. I liked the structure. Um, my bishop is lives on white squares, so I liked that too. I start doubling up. Start coming into the position. My knight's in a good position. And here, I stupidly miss maiden one. I The funny thing is, I saw maiden one, like, right here. I'm like, my idea here is to have the rook here and the queen here. That's my idea. And at this point, I thought he was going to come back with the rook. This is what I expected to happen. Which, by the way, not the best move, because I could take, uh, take, and, um... Come in with this check, which I also saw, right? If the rook blocks or some other piece blocks the queen's axis, I could come in with check. And uh, very quickly, some crazy stuff could happen. I don't know. Uh, anyway. I also saw, obviously, the threat of having checkmate. For some reason, when he took my knight, I was more obsessed with attacking the rook. I don't know why. I trade off my good bishop, and I just start making stupid mistakes. Like, very stupid decisions. And we kind of jump around, and, and uh, I'm trying to be better on time, so I'm playing a little faster. And, and here I had this beautiful... Okay, this I'm not going to get my, mad at myself for missing. But I had... Oh, that would have been bad. I had this idea to, to win the queen. You might think, why doesn't he move here? Well, then I have checkmate. So... You know, I should have spent time thinking about it. I didn't. And I missed the opportunity kind of twice. He moves his king to safety. A bunch of moves later, he finds a way to uh, perpetually check and the game ends. Pretty sad stuff. Okay, this game, I play with 92.9% .9 accuracy. My opponent plays with 93.1, which freaking Jesus Christ. And we go into... The French defense. I studied the French defense because if you guys remember yesterday or the day before, I had trouble with it. And I wanted to study it. And it actually came in use. And what I studied was bringing the knight to d2. So I looked at the wing gambit. I looked at the Taraj variation, which is what we're looking at now. And I looked at the advanced variation, the exchange variation. I don't like the advanced variation. It's similar to the Karo Khan. There's, the pawn structure is annoying. The d4 pawn is a liability. You don't want a center pawn being a liability. You have to spend a lot of resources trying to protect it. I don't like the positional play around it. So I decided for the Tarash. Why? Because when they bring the knight out, I can push. Um, I think there's several ways to look at it. I, I only watched a few videos on it. But, but I liked that it's just there's less. You're still fighting for this control, but the knight is better situated. It's already developed. You could come to b3 and kind of make things progress faster. Even though I don't like this position much, I, I like the fact that my knight comes out before his queen is kind of around. Uh, of course, I don't really know the book moves. I just happen to play, like, decent moves here. And uh, he brings the queen out. I, I trade, and I castle. And here, I don't hate my position. I really don't, because what can my opponent do? Uh, not much. Like, he's playing pretty much the best moves, and I'm pretty happy with this. I don't mind drawing against the French, because I really don't like it. So I kind of pressure the queen around. I make sure my pawn, center pawn, is defended. I move my rook away. Um, and I'm just okay with trading everything. I'm okay with trading everything, because I find this beautiful move, or what I thought was a beautiful move. My opponent spends a minute and a half thinking, moves the rook, which kind of protects this pin idea. Uh, ideas of getting the a7 pawn, of checkmating, of taking the bishop. Kind of protects against that. And here I move my knight here. I kind of, I think for 20 seconds, I move it here. And the reasoning for this move was to just bring the knight to kind of pressure these things around here and, and, and push my pawns. Okay, apparently I should have just pushed my pawns. And I recognize why right away. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm stupid. This pawn protects this pawn. Apparently it doesn't really matter. The knight can come here and attack my bishop anyway. I would go to c3. Well, if I go to c3, actually he has d4. Um, I could go to c5, keeping an eye on this on this square. If I take here, then the knight takes me, so that doesn't work. I could go to c5, he could go to b5, and um, the game would continue. I guess it's it's neutral, but I, I feel like I have a stronger I, I have stronger ideas here with the two kind of pawns. I, I might have said two pass pawns before. Obviously, they're not both pass pawns, but I could create a pass pawn uh, possibly there. And I kind of blitz out this move thinking that my opponent blundered a pawn and he takes, um, he goes to the center, attacking my bishop, 
attacking the pawn and offers a draw. And honestly, I didn't like my position here. I saw it as a drawish thing and I agreed to a draw. It's like the first time someone actually offered a draw and I agreed and I, both of those things don't really happen much. Okay. So I win, I lose two games, I, I win a game by luck, I drew a game or two, and then I go into the Albin counter gambit. Now, I almost never play people who actually play all the book moves of the Albin counter gambit. Most of the time, people play this A3 move, and I play around it, and the game ends up being, uh, okay, I think I win, or I do I do decently. But people tend to play this move to, to prevent the bishop from coming in. Now, I get confused with the Falkbeer Gambit and the Albin Counter Gambit. One is for Queen's Gambit positions, one is for King's Gambit positions. Well, here, the Bishop move actually doesn't... Okay, so the Pawn is also a book move. But this is very clever, because I guess most people don't do it. The Bishop move doesn't do anything for me. And honestly, I should develop my Knight to have an attack on this Pawn, I'm guessing, and to kind of have central control and whatever. Okay, so I check... I bring my bishop here, I bring the knight, and I push my pawn. And I blunder this pawn, but my opponent is playing super fast and doesn't see it. I didn't want to come here because I thought this knight would become a target after the rook comes here. Like, what am I doing with this knight? What is it doing here? Apparently, like a push d3 because after takes takes, I'm attacking the rook. The rook has nowhere to go, it looks like. And uh, after b4, targeting the knight, it takes, and let's say takes. Um... I guess my knight is in a very tricky position. Oh, I could come in with check. Okay, that's actually pretty crazy. And that That's apparently neutral, though. I guess my queen is forced to become passive. Anyway, that's not what happens. This is how the game progresses instead. I'm happy to get rid of that bishop, um, but I'm losing. I thought I was in a good position, but then he messes up. And he messes up. I, I, I didn't see this. Um, I saw this. And the idea behind this move is simple. I let him take the pawn, but I come in with the fork, taking the rook. I also saw ideas of coming to d2, but taking the pawn and, and getting a check is obviously better. Here, I could have even came for this discovered attack, which is pretty crazy. I don't know. I I would not have calculated this. This looks... I, I'm not... Listen, maybe computers are geniuses, because for me, that looks crazy. I just took. This is a simple decision. And I'm telling you, I don't know. It's the time. Like, the people are playing fast or something. There's some pressure in me because I'm making a lot of bad mistakes and quick mistakes. And and this is very, this becomes very interesting. My opponent starts creating passed pawns. I take his knight and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely winning here. But around this time, I'm like, I have to be careful. I'm thinking I'm stopping the king from coming forward. So that's probably good. I bring the rook here. I actually saw this move, but I'm like, I feel like I do this a lot getting behind the pawn. But after this, what do I do? I'm kind of stupid. I'm always watching this pawn. The king ha is kind of glued to the pawn. So, dumb decision, like, by me. Um, apparently, then I could bring start bringing my king into the game. So, I don't do that. I bring the rook here. I kind of put pressure on that pawn. I check. And here, I find the perfect draw. All I have to do is go back and forth here, right? If his king tries to get out, I force it back so he can't promote. Now, if he tries to push this, I have, you know, maybe h6 attacking it. That's what I saw. I mean, computer says e6. Okay, I guess it stops any rook ideas. Oh, no, now it's saying h6. It had time to think, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a computer. And obviously, I, there's some tension here, and I could, you know, threaten promotion and and so on. Uh, but my opponent, of course, is playing fast and um, gets out of the position, gets to safety, and I knew I lost here. I had a minute left, and um, uh, we just kind of shuffle around, and then I get checkmated. This is the last game. Uh, we play the copycat, or at least what I thought was the copycat. My opponent brings the bishop to e7 instead of the typical c5. And I didn't, I guess I didn't study it enough. I, I, I bring my queen to g4. And that's why we shouldn't rely on openings. We should think about the decisions and moves we make. Because this is a terrible move, and I saw it right after I made it. It's just bad. I had to kind of ignore the copycat variation type of ideas. Like, yeah, maybe coming here would have been fine. It seems like it equalizes the position. Um, but I all I needed to do was bring my knight to f3. It's, like, as simple as that. I got too excited for the copycat variation. I brought it here. And this is just bad because my bishop gets attacked. Okay. Now here, idiot that I am. Well, actually, not idiot. I calculated this. This. 
And then I thought, okay, my bishop is dying. <laughs> like, what do I do here? This looks terrible. And uh, I think I was right. This is terrible. So after missing that move, I, I kind of play around for a bit more, just trying to have fast, quick movements and, and attacks. And it's just really bad. And I, I think, you know, around move 37, he gets a checkmate with a knight. So, you know, if you're down a piece against 1700, it's typically just going to lose. But I'm happy I fought on here. I should have I should fight on in every game, though. Like that first game was tough. A lot of tough games, a lot of losses, but um, currently rated like 1700, and we'll get into a game right now, if it loads. Jesus, please load. Also, the fr um, this website, Lee Chess, is so cool for opening databases. It tells you stuff. Wanted to mention that anyway. Get a queen's pawn opening, and right away, we get the uh, Albin counter gambit. Against Kevin Hart, white Kevin Hart playing the guitar. <sighs> okay, that move looks weird to me. That just looks weird. Um, I don't know how to actually progress from here. So let's just think logically, right? We don't want to rely on that stuff anyway. Bishop comes here. There's ideas of takes. If takes, we have the knight coming in. That looks logical. Takes, if takes, we have the bishop coming in. Bishop blocks, maybe a queen check. Looks okay, let's just take. I think that's fine. If queen takes, it's an obvious move. Okay. Um. Wait, is this not a, like a checkmate threat soon? No, because of this, okay. Come here. Now, I feel like the bishop will block. Then we have queen here. The other bishop will block. Maybe. I don't know why I didn't consider that move. Um, interesting. I'm not going to lie. This looks like um, Nimzo Indian now. French defense exchange Monte Carlo variation. <laughs> That's what the computer says. Okay. Because I feel like Nimzo Indian has this um, kind of similar setup. But I'm tempted to come here, just castle quickly, try to attack the, the king, because his king is not very well situated. So I'm just going to do that. Of course, bishop g5 looks slightly annoying. But, eh. We could always just h6 it. Very interesting position. There's also knight b5. <gasps> I just lost my bishop. Queen a4. And I think this is a common idea in these openings as well. That was just stupid. Oh, he didn't see it. Oh, he didn't see it. Oh, my God. All right, we're just going to go for the check. No overthinking here. Jesus, that looks like a very stupid center. Um, I think we're getting lucky. Our opponent is not making great moves. I want to take, but I feel like developing our pieces is probably smarter. Uh, like castling, getting the rook ready to check. I mean, all his pieces are in the back row. I might have had a trick there, but I think this is this was a smart decision. Castle here. Um, yeah. Okay, he could castle on the same in the next move. I don't know what I was thinking there. <laughs> that was just not 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 that smart. Um, we could obviously take this, maybe threaten this after. I kind of like that. But we're not getting our pieces developed, which is a little bit no a little bit of a no no. Um now if we take with the no, let's just take with the knight. There's this move. But I feel like he's just weakening everything with that move. Maybe he does have an annoying push though. We should probably spend more time thinking. I think h6. I was thinking knight c6 to just develop. Um, the bishop to g4 I don't really like because the knight could come forward. <laughs> Actually, that seems like a good idea. Bishop g4. If he pushes, I could just go back and just ruin his pawn structure even more. And then I, I would want to like make sure all my pieces are in good 
places. Now, if he attacks the knight this way, then... That's a very interesting move. So what if I just attack the bishop? He goes back. I am ruining the safety of my king. There is a, a potential attack here. Something like this, this, um, this. Wait, yeah, I think that's a terrible move. We attack the bishop. Okay, so that, that was his whole plan. That was actually kind of interesting. <laughs> that was a terrible move. Oh, that was kind of interesting. All right. Um, I think the bishop move was needed before. And the idea behind the bishop move actually is that he can't castle. He has to castle now, I think. Yeah. I should have done the bishop move before. This was hanging. Um... Yeah, I don't like my position anymore. Did we just develop the knight? Where's the where's this knight going? Maybe to b6? Ugh. Also ideas of here, here. If takes, takes, takes. Yeah, I feel like I neutralized my advantage. Trying to use big words here. All right, I'm playing too slow though. Let's just, I mean, developing a knight is never bad, right? You're developing a piece. Now if queen comes here and he comes here, then it sets up the knight attack though. But then if he comes here, we have this check, so it's fine. Let's do that. I think that's smart, because this, this, if he tries to attack the queen again, we have check. Okay, yeah. Um, ooh. Our rook's not defended. Okay, Def uh, the uh, developing the knight feels more needed now. Let's develop the knight. Now it could become a target because of the pawn, but it doesn't feel like this really works. Maybe I go to f8. Ah, uh, he's pinning it. Um, I feel like I can come back now. Is it too... Can I trap him? Here, 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 here. It looks pretty bad for black. Maybe. Something like takes, takes, takes. But does the bishop need to even go back for that plan to happen? Maybe I just continue. Maybe I just move my king to the side. I kind of like the idea of moving my king to the side. Letting him take. Bringing this rook here. Getting into the position this way. Okay, that changes my calculus a little bit. Here, here, here. I mean, this idea still works. And again, c5 doesn't work because of the check. Oh. I feel like he's forced to take here. Mm -hmm. I could take on f3 and pick up a pawn. But then my knight might be hanging from an attack. So unless I go knight c5 attacking the queen. That actually looks pretty cool. So here, do I want to trade everything? Not really. Here, if he comes here, we get this check. Maybe we double the rooks. A little bit risky though, because then he could take here. But I feel like it's a pretty good idea. Let's just play it. It also protects our knight. Computer is probably going to say, hey, you could have gone b6 and just protected everything. Uh, let's take. Okay, let's bring the rook. Wait, now we win this pawn. But our position is very unstable looking. Jesus. 
I'm thinking this, this, this. Eh. Let's do it. I like how it looks, actually. Aha. <clears throat> uh -huh. This, this, this. I bait him to take the knight. I come here. No, the rook just goes back and defends. Plus, this is not even mate. Um... Hmm. Shit, not looking good. Here, here, here could be an option. Let's do that. Not good. I'm playing very reactively to my opponent's moves. Now, if he does nothing, b6 looks like the obvious move. Like, if he pushes this pawn, I'm just probably going to go b6. It also gives us c5 to attack. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, go here. If he takes this, maybe we have knight e5 with this. That looks good. This doesn't work. Everything's protected. Okay. I think we actually did okay there. Okay. I want to come here, but then... Then he could literally just check. And then I'd get checkmated. Damn, this guy is so annoyingly good at this game. Um, I mean, he sucks. What am I doing? The rook gets... No, the rook doesn't get taken. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? The rook gets taken. No, it doesn't. Oh, I got scared for no reason there. Okay, he... queen f7 doesn't work because of the knight move. So I think he's forced to trade here. And now I have to somehow deal with this. Which doesn't look too fun. Let's just go here. That looks smart. Got to think a little bit here. Here, here. Here, here. I think this is a drawn position. Oh, shit. That was such a good move. What rating is my opponent? 17, 13. Why am I playing so trash lately? Ugh. Past few days. Okay. That was such a good move. Because I pushed the pawn. He pushes the pawn. I could come here. He could attack my rook. Now, I could come attacking here. But then he could come there. Or he could take. Take. Um, I think pushing works. Actually, the bishop can't go there. So he's going to push the pawn. We're going to go to c7. He's going to have a passed pawn. Uh, that's not good. I don't think trading the knight off with the bishop is necessarily that good. He also has, he always has this back rank mate idea, which I didn't think about because I'm stupid. I think h6 to allow a potential g6 in the future to get away from checks is, is because he might be able to have e4 to stop my king from escaping later. I think this is the obvious move. I think I'll go here. If he attacks again, I can come here. He can come here. Then I have this nice knight d3 move attacking the rook, but then he could just move it over. Um, Yeah, I think I just have to kind of push this forward. My opponent is playing very well. Here, 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 here. And the knight actually stops checkmate. Here, here. I think that works. I hope I remember what I just said. It starts with knight d7. 
targeting this. After he comes forward, we go to c5, I believe. Oh, he could just move the rook over. Shit. Another, no, no, no other ideas. I'm playing this really badly. Maybe knight a6. And then we could blockade the pawn. And of course I have a minute left, guys. Jeez. Terrible day for chess and me. Of course, knight a6 also allows us... Yeah, it blockades. It allows us to push our pawn. Kind of unsuccessfully. <laughs> Actually, very unsuccessfully. Yeah. I don't think that works. I think he made a mistake. I made a mistake. That's checkmate. We have this move. It's okay. I saw the checkmate. <clears throat> I prepared all of that, guys. That was my genius at work. Now, if he goes here, I go here, takes, takes. We blockade and move our king to the side, I believe. All right, because this looks like a terrible move. So we're going to go here, take. Oh, we might have to trade the knight off. Bishop's going to come here, and it's going to take way too long for us to get there. Shit. Yeah, we might have to trade the knight off, so... We either lose or we get lucky and draw. I don't know if this is a drawn position or not, but we're going to keep fighting with a minute left on the clock. I mean, this looks like an obvious type of, yeah. Now, can we actually blockade? I don't think so. I think we're just forced to move pawns. And I don't have time to think. What an annoying opponent. We could trade everything off, that would be nice. Ugh, his king is so into the position though, I don't like that. I think this is a lost position, especially the way I moved my king in the end game. Offer a draw, please? Wait, what if I offer a draw? <laughs> Your opponent ref How fast did he refuse that draw? Jesus. A little too fast there, buddy. I'm gonna offer another draw. Oh, that was a clever move. That was a very clever move. That's a lost... That's lost for me. That is lost for me. That is lost. I mean, he has the bishop. If he had one extra pawn, maybe I could draw it, but he has a bishop. He could literally just move the bishop and I get killed. Oh, that might have given me a chance. If he pushes this forward... Was that a draw? That's a draw. No, it's not. I have h7. I don't have h7. That's a stalemate if he takes. Ugh, but he's thinking about it. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, and this is good. The idea here is I take. If he pushes his pawn, I just push mine. I don't have any other chance. Uh, maybe I had something, but I didn't see it. Oh, he could just take it. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. 
Just oh, that was a terrible move. <laughs> Just let me draw, please. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Imagine with 0.4 seconds. I'm I'm officially lower than a 1700. Ay ay ay. I had one blunder. All of that. Those were book moves in the stupid French opening that I thought was an Alpen gam gambit that turned into a French. Ah, because he played this pawn move. Okay, at least I I played the best moves here. Yeah, I thought I thought I messed up here. I thought he had this, but the knight actually comes out and protects the bishop, so that was dumb by me. I could already see someone in the comments saying, hey, you had this move. How didn't you see that? And here I could have just castled. Yeah, why did I take? I should have kept the tension. Um, but okay, this game was pretty even. Here my opponent... Oh, yeah, of course he blunders. I'm attacking the queen. Oh my god, I'm stupid. And now I'm up a pawn. I mean, but this position's not like I'm gonna win the game, but still. I should have seen that. Putting more pressure, because if he castles, I take, and I'm winning. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Now, if he comes here, I do have to be care. It looks like I have to be careful, because it looks like this is mate. But it's not, actually, because I have f7, but also it's pinned. So after takes, I could, you know, develop my bishop here, probably. Oh, what a sad game. It's okay. I, I should have seen. I, and I also thought about c6 instead of d7. But Oh my god, the bishop move was the best move here. I don't know why I didn't play it. I was looking at something like this. Okay, I didn't even see the queen taking, to be honest. I just thought this was better for me. He could even come here attacking. <laughs> uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. I mean, that was attacking my rook too. Okay. So even my ideas weren't weren't that good. Yeah. What did I say? Computer was say b5 is the best move. I literally called it. I literally called it. Oh my god. The knight move was good. The queen move was good. Like I I figured all of that was fine. And I saw this move. I didn't like this, but I could just. Ah, it looks like he's getting into the position, but I have c6. I had to trade off that bishop. It was too strong. I had to just live with the fact that he had an extra pawn. I think that was my mistake. Yeah, and here there was literally nothing I could do. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Tomorrow we'll be back to 1700 and say poop because it's been a poopy day and I have a poop shirt on. Say poop in the comments if you watch this far. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.